Paul here, Bob, in Texas. Welcome to the program, Bob. Yes, Dr. Keyes, thank you so much. Um, I passed this idea by Bradley Dean and John Whitehead Monday. Uh, instead of attacking just each of the issues we have before us, I'm thinking about one specifically, and that's uh, the, the, the corruption in the machines. But what I'd like to start with is well, we have we have run out of advantages because everybody is sold out for money, but we still do have our numbers. We have elected bodies where there is prayer, and we have elected bodies where there is public participation, and we have our conservative voices like you and Bradley Dean and and Frank Speech and and all these favorite places. What I would like to see is take the information from Frank's speech on all of the electronic voting that he has uncovered. It's just insurmountable. Mm -hmm. And then get people like you and Bradley and John to actually go to your elected body, fill out a form to publicly speak for three minutes to demonstrate how machines are so corrupted and how ballots are so uncorruptible, hand counted in precinct on election day by the by the residents of the precinct. And then show your public participation to your viewers, encouraging them to go to their elected body, fill out a form, publicly participate, say something for three minutes. And it's up to each county to determine how they vote. And I think we can utilize our only asset left. That is, you know, our numbers. We outnumber them 99 to 1. And prayer in the public venue and the public participation. And I think we can uh, make a quick change in these corrupted electronic voting ways that we do like the Netherlands did. It took them five months to go from electric to paper. I think we could actually do it in less. I'm sorry to take up so much time. I no, hope no, I was not, clear. Because you're raising a really vital point, uh, which I think is simply correct. Uh, we're making a poor use of technology, by the way, because I don't think technology is entirely irrelevant. But I marvel at the fact that we think that it's better to use technology in a way that are only a handful of people really familiar uh, with how the machines can actually be uh, doped up, right? Uh, if you understand right. that process, you might be able to safeguard against it. There's a simpler way to safeguard if you have actual human beings doing the count. And the usual way to safeguard against human shenanigans is to watch them every minute. Isn't it? Keep an eye on them. Make sure that they're doing nothing that can be hidden uh, from the view of others. Do you realize that we now have a technology that would turn every voting place into a place where people could visit by the thousands to keep their eye on what is going on so that tens of thousands of eyes would be focused on the count while it was taking place everywhere in America? That could be done with a little investment of resources and, and, and connection to the internet for all the polling places to broadcast what each and every worker is doing, counting the ballots as I think they're best counted by hand. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. We shouldn't be daunted uh, by the notion, well, there are millions of ballots and so forth and so on. No, we have millions of people and uh, they can count. The only problem is we can't watch the machines inside, can we? to see what shenanigans is on. Seth Keschel, other people who have the special knowledge can after the fact tell you what went on. But uh, here we're in a process where if we go back to the old fashioned way in this respect, but use newfangled technology to keep our eyes on what's going on, I think it would be much harder to cheat. Do I make sense? Yes, it, it certainly does. But that's the small hurdle right there. The big hurdle is convincing our commissioner's court, at least in Texas, that the machines are corrupted. We had we had both Louis Gohmert, our outgoing U.S. rep, and then our incoming 
uh, U.S. rep will be Nathaniel Moran, and he's currently our judge. And they were speaking almost simultaneously uh, uh, at an event uh, in February. And Louis said the reason he's coming back to Smith County is because he knows elections are corrupted. Judge Moran had just told us that elections are totally secure. They're never, ever, ever connected to the Internet. When, in fact, if you look at some of the, uh, uh, you know, those, the, the evidence that, that uh, Frank Speech has, uh, you know, Mike Lindell, it's just irrefutable and it's damning and it's, it's, it needs to be enforced. But anyway, uh, we, we've got to, we've got to get people to go to their court and make the argument in mass. So my point is, it would be great if you went to your county and made your presentation on, you know, the evidence against electronic machines. And then if Bradley Dean goes and John Whitehead goes and Mike Lindell goes and everybody that we know goes to their their pre- their their uh, county and makes an argument against machines and for paper, you know, we could. You know, with your audience showing your, you know, what you said in court and then discussing it to your live audience on, on Wednesday and, you know, just sort of aggregate a mass that would show up and it would be impossible for them not to change. Anyway, that's my prayer. Well, uh, a, a very interesting idea. I'll reflect on it seriously because I think that's the kind of endeavor that will be most effective if we can organize people so that they are taking the steps that are needed in a well-publicized way all over the country, all at the same time. Uh, You notice that when parents started to stand up and question these school boards who are trying to destroy the character of our children, right? Uh, That grabbed attention. And I think that's what we would need to do in order to make it clear that fundamental point, one, we need to get rid of these machine ballots. We don't need them. The argument that we need to count ballots by machine because it's easier, that's a lie. Uh, What it's easier to do, in spite of all protestations to the contrary, uh, is cheat. And and the people say that. Oh, you're kidding. The election can't be uh, stolen, so forth and so on. And I've read article after article in which people who know what they're talking about say that elections have been stolen in other countries and can be stolen here and were stolen. Uh, We can't verify that one way or another if you don't look. And what did the courts do in America? At the top, the Supreme Court refused to take a look. That's a travesty. Uh, So those are supposed to guarantee a Republican form of government in each of the states. You can't have a Republican form of government without honest elections. They decided that making sure that the elections were not uh, uh, involving cheating and dishonesty was none of their business. It was a travesty. And we should never right. forget it. And you're right. We need to band together to call people to account for it from our state legislatures who make the initial provisions for how elections are to be handled all the way up to the Supreme Court of the United States. You're right. So God bless you for the call. Okay. Oh, you're right about the, you know, the Supreme Court. Ken Paxton had that case that they said they didn't have standing but they absolutely, by the law book, had to take that case. That's the purpose of the Supreme Court. When states get together and have something wrong with one of the other states, the Supreme Court has to step in. So the last point is is we are in an avalanche just like Nicaragua and Venezuela and other countries. And if we don't do something different, and the difference here is you – Speaking out in court, Bradley speaking out in court, John speaking out in court, and showing that to your audience and suggesting that they, too, can go to their court and make their three-minute presentation uninterrupted. And then if you have 10 or 12 or 20 people show up, just like a lot of those those uh, uh, moms and dads, I was actually one that got the porn out of our high school uh, at, at my school board. but. You know, we had about eight people there, and that was enough to stir up enough concern by the by the school board that they did 
pull out those uh, pull out those books. We've got to keep an eye on them. But uh, anyway, I'm I'm looking for something different, and that is getting you to actually show it, demonstrate, and so we can emulate what you do, speaking to your commissioner's court because they make the decisions on how ballots go, and then to your audience, and then encourage your audience to do what you did to get rid of these corrupted, egregiously abominable machines. Well, I thank you for the thought, and I, I will ponder that. Uh, thanks for the call. Appreciate it very much. Okay. And, and I, I'm serious about that. I, th I think that we have to do something. But here's my one reservation that I, I was listening to Bob from Texas, uh, because I agree with the direction that we have to go in. But right now, I'm deeply concerned about where the initiative comes from. See, initiative being a word that means who's supposed to start the ball rolling. And I think one of the things we've fallen prey to in our present understanding, and when I say we, I'm referring to the whole body politic and all of the citizens who are part of that body politic who therefore have the responsibility. We call it a right, but it is an opportunity to do what's right, which is therefore a responsibility. To whom? Well, according to our founding understanding of our own source of authority, you see? We have that responsibility to God Almighty. A lot of people in this country have forgotten it. And you have states in Europe and so forth, explicitly, that they declare themselves to be secular. So Bradley, this is our opportunity to do something as we the people, but to kickstart that something that we must do at the commissioner's court level is to have a cheerleader that shows us how to participate at commissioner's court and present some of the evidence that we too can carry to our commissioner's court and present the evidence in mass showing that machines are irreversibly corrupt and that we must count paper ballots in precinct, in person, by the people that live in those precincts. Precincts were designed that all the ballots can be counted proper, promptly on election day in precinct. In Smith County, we have like 250,000 people. We got 72 precincts. And each one of those could be a polling place. Thanks a lot for your time. And I'm praying this makes sense. And I love what you and Alan and Mike Lindell and everybody's doing. Thanks a lot. We just need the aggregation. And you guys are it. Thanks.